guys, welcome back to Sir TV. I'm Rotak Pata, your usual host. Today we have Multi Choice Botswana in studio. Today we're going to be talking about the Multi Choice Botswana story. We have Tembi Le Lehuaila, who is the corporate affairs manager at Multi Choice Botswana, to tell us the story about uh, Multi Choice. Welcome to the show, Tembi. Thank you. Thank you, Rotak. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy to have Thank you, you for here. Us. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, Tembi, uh, can you just tell us exactly what you do as a corporate affairs manager at um, at Multi Choice? All right. Uh, yes. So as you rightfully said, I am the corporate affairs manager for Multi Choice mm -hmm. Botswana. I have been with the business since 2015 um, in various different roles, starting out as PR and publicity executive, and now I am basically in charge at looking after the reputation of the Multi Choice Botswana brand. Ah. Uh, so that includes many aspects. Uh, my key focus areas are stakeholder engagement, issues management, mm. uh, internal communications also falls under my portfolio, corporate communications, you know, writing articles and yeah. telling the story of multi-choice Botswana and DSTV. Mm. And what is probably my favorite part of my job, which mm -hmm. is creating shared value, mm. which is basically our corporate social responsibility initiatives. Oh, is that right? Yes. <laughs> is that your favorite part? Yes, that is the part of my job that I love the most. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk about the multi-choice story in terms of when it, it came to Botswana um, and where does it actually originate from? Yes. So in 1985, um, under NASPERS group, mm. uh, Mnet was started. Mm. Um, and it was just one channel, and it was a pay TV uh, channel where you actually pay to subscribe, just as we do now. Yeah. Uh, then it branched off to add Supersport, which was obviously just sporting. Um, and then eventually uh, developed into multi choice group. Mm. Um, which then decided to branch out of South Africa and open up different uh, markets in different countries. Mm. So we opened in 1992 in Main Mall, mm. which is a handful of employees, no mm. network, no footprint, nothing, just us in Main Mall, with very minimal channels. Um, and I believe we had one or two installers that serviced the area. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that is where we began and we've grown. It's been 30 years. Yeah. Um, and we have increased our footprint. We've increased our network. We've obviously gained so many more packages and channels. Um, and we're really just excited to have made it this long in Botswana. Yeah. Um, particularly, especially in the times that we're in now. Yeah. Um, where the economy is going through what it's going through. Mm. Um, but we've, we've really been very grateful to have our customers stay on board. Oh. Yes, yeah, so Tim... Let's talk about the growth um, of Multi Choice yes. since its arrival in Botswana, the intentional partnerships, the creation of employment, and obviously broadening the entertainment um, in Botswana through Multi Choice. We've really grown hand in hand mm. with our partners, and essentially for the purpose of being able to make more of a socioeconomic contribution to Botswana, mm. but also not only that, but being able to provide our customers and our subscribers with more convenient solutions, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so obviously the starting point is just making sure that we are in compliance with uh, you know, the regulatory requirements yeah. of being a, an, a pay TV operator in Botswana. Yeah. Um, that also includes uh, the Ministry of Transport and Comms, ensuring that we are aligned to their core mandate as well. Mm. Uh, working hand in hand with the Ministry of Youth because a lot of what we we do speaks to the local content industry mm -hmm. and obviously empowering youth uh, yes. because that's our whole multi-choice talent factory program which I'll talk about yes. later. Um, but then above and beyond that, I think it's also what's really important is the relationships and partnerships we've built with our core network yeah. uh, because that is how we empower Botswana, mm -hmm. especially the youth but just empower uh, Botswana in general. And that includes our agencies. We have mm. nine agencies to date, and we're opening a few more um, around Botswana mm. um, in other villages you know, where you can't access a multi-choice Botswana branch. Mm. And at those agencies, basically, we've given um, you know, individuals the opportunity to create employment for themselves and for other people mm. um, because their agencies sell our products. Yes, I wanted to find out yes. what the agencies do. Yes, yeah, okay. yes. So yeah. the agencies, basically, if you're in Pique, obviously, mm. you're not going to be able to reach the Moen, Francistown, or Khabaroni branch, yeah. right? So in Pique, it's just another branch, in mm. other words, right? But it's it's independently run by those individuals. Wow. It's their agency. Yeah. They'll usually operate it under another name, right? But mm -hmm. they're selling our products and our services. Okay. Yes. Um, and they pr provide technical support as well. Mm. Um, and because of the, the fact that they're part of our network, we obviously offer them services of training, et cetera, so mm. they know more about our product. Yeah. Uh, we also have our accredited installer network, where we have 90 accredited installers. Mm. 
uh, which we've engaged throughout the years. Some of them are new, but you know, we also have some that have been with us since the start, which yeah. is really great. Since 92. Since 92. And that's still there. Yes. That's amazing. We recently had a commercial on air of, of one of the longest running ones. His name is Chris. Yeah. Um, you know, and we're so happy to see how, you know, being with Multi Choice has helped him grow. He's able to send his son to graduate from college. I just amazing. saw pictures of yeah. his son graduating. So that's that's what it's all about, really, yeah. you know, um, enriching lives, which is what we stand yeah. for and what our ethos is. Um, so yes, yeah, so we have our accredited installer network, which we train periodically. So obviously, as decoders are innovated, they need to learn yeah. about the products and yes, services. Yeah. So they get that from us as well. And then we have a direct sales force network, which mm -hmm. is v relatively new to the business. Um, and these are foot soldiers who are across Botswana, who also sell our decoders and also allow you to subscribe. Mm -hmm. And then they receive payment, they receive commission for this. So okay. it's their it's, own it's little... Actually, is it in-house, uh, that, that one? No, they're external. They're external. So so these well, are just nice. external individuals who maybe want to make some money on the side or yeah. you know want to do something else um, you know we have quite a few of them who maybe are employed formally but they want to do something on the side yeah so they sell DSTV products and services and it's easy for them to do they make their own money they determine how much they'll make in a month because it's up to them on how when much they they'll sell, sell. Yeah, yeah exactly mm -hmm. so we have that network as well and then obviously we've had our partnerships with the creative industry yeah uh, because we're working very hard to push like I said the multi-choice talent factory initiative yeah. which is our uh, core or CSR project at the moment. Ah, yeah. To tell us more about the multi the multi choice talent factory academy. I always see it on social media. Yes. You're currently even I'm doing glad one. You do. Yes, I do. <laughs> we see it, but I don't think we uh, many people understand exactly what's going on there. What are you guys yes. doing at multi choice um, talent uh, factory academy? We all, we see the graduations. <laughs> yes, we see all that. But you know, but I don't know. Let's let's get the view. I understand exactly what are you doing. It's a CSR project. You say yes. What, what what is happening there? Yes. So we launched the multi choice talent factory initiative in 2018. Mm -hmm. Um, it was launched by the Multi-Choice Africa Holdings, mm -hmm. um, and it is our Creating Shared Value initiative, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, others call it CSR. We like to call it created, uh, Creating Shared Value. Yeah. Right? Uh, so essentially, it was brought upon uh, to ignite Africa's creative industries. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as Multi-Choice, we are Africa's most loved storyteller. Mm -hmm. We pride ourselves on, you know, using the gift of entertainment to enrich lives. Yeah. Um, so what better initiative than one that speaks to actually creating the content that people watch yeah. um, than this, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, so we launched it um, in 2018, as I said, and it's a three-legged initiative. It's got three legs. Uh, the first one being the academy, mm -hmm. which I'll speak to just now. Mm -hmm. And then we have the master classes, mm -hmm. um, where we have industry experts um, from our network as the multi-choice group mm -hmm. uh, come into different markets, come into Botswana, different countries, and and train um, already seasoned filmmakers. Mm -hmm. So if you have experience in, in film already and you've worked on productions, maybe you have your own production house. This is where you would go for a free masterclass mm -hmm. to hone your skills in oh. a specific area. So maybe script writing or sound or editing, etc. Yeah. And then lastly, we have the MTF portal, mm. which is basically just an intranet, it's an intraweb, it's a Facebook for creatives, yeah. uh, where you register, you log on, and you're able to collaborate and connect with people all across Africa, mm. work on different projects, you get alerts for different master classes that are going on in your area. Yeah. It really is just a great place for you to actually build your career in terms of networking. Oh, amazing. Yes. It is. is really amazing, yes. actually. Yeah. <laughs> so any creative can go in any. as long as you're you're interested in um, yeah. this kind of production. Hundred oh, percent. So even if you're a makeup artist or you're a wardrobe stylist, yeah. or you know, you don't need necessarily need to be someone who holds the camera or does the sound and lighting. Yeah. Even if you're on the back end, you know, the production design element of it. Yeah. It is a great network. So my for production you. team can come. Oh, hundred percent, <laughs> and they must. They should come. <laughs> yes. Okay. So what about me as the the the, the, the presenter, the host, the producer? You can Oh, ah, yeah, nice. 100%. Because there will be people who are looking you, you, to do a production who need someone like you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Maybe you'll have somebody from outside of Botswana who wants to come and do something in Botswana. Yeah. And they need to know where else will they find who's a presenter, who's somebody yeah. who's an actress, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And this is why it's important to have your profile up on there. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So how does it work? How can I apply for it? So every year, we send two young Botswana filmmakers to Lusaka, Zambia, mm -hmm. where they have a one-year fully sponsored academic program. Mm -hmm. Mm. where they are taught 
film mm. from experts. So the industry experts behind your Mnets, your Super Sport. Yeah. We also have a partnership with New York Film Academy. Mm. So they also get a qualification from that, which wow. is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and like I said, it's, it's fully sponsored. We give them a stipend for the year every month. Yeah. They get medical aid. They get travel allowance to yeah. come back home for big holidays. Um, and they learn not only, you know, the filmmaking of how to use a camera, sound, blah, 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 mm. but also the business of film. Because mm. what we want is that when they come back home, that they don't go looking for jobs. We don't want them to go work at an agency. Mm. We this want be self them, efficient. Yes, yeah. we want them to create employment for themselves yeah. and for others. Amazing. Which we're really excited because the, the four graduates we've had to date have all done that. They've really Amazing. surpassed our, yeah. you know, our expectations. Yeah. You know, when you start something, we started in 2018, and it was the first of its kind for us. Mm -hmm. You hope and pray that you know the it people. Works out. Yeah. <laughs> That the benefit from it because yes. that's only, the only thing you can do. Yes, hope and pray. hundred yeah. percent. And you also hope and pray that the people that you select, because I mean, we do the interviewing in country, right? Mm. So you hope that the people you send make you proud and you yeah. know, do the right thing, come back yeah. home, and yeah. actually create, you know, what they're supposed to create. Yeah. And we're so ecstatic that all four ladies. All happen to be ladies. It wasn't by, you know, it wasn't <laughs> not a lady by thing. design. <laughs> it's open to men as well. It yeah. just so happens that I don't know women in Botswana clearly. I don't know. We're we are killing very it in that space. No, we are. Yeah, on a general. Yeah. <laughs> so they've they've come back and um, they've all started their own production companies. Yeah. Uh, they've all worked on productions for us. They've worked mm. on productions for um, yeah. other uh, broadcasters as well. So we're very excited about that. And so we are now, like I said, we we have our call to entries for the next class, mm. um, and we're hoping to get hopefully a guy this time. <laughs> <At least one. laughs> I'm sure so you it will. doesn't look but discriminatory. But some of the women do kill it on a general. Oh, not even 100%. necessarily on their space. We're yeah, just killing yeah, it. yeah, yeah. But we're hoping to get a guy this time. That'd be amazing. Um, <laughs> yes, and then they they join um, eighteen other students from across the southern region. So mm -hmm. there's three academies: one in Lusaka, one in West Africa and in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and then one in East Africa and Kenya. Ah. So in total, there's sixty students in a year. Mm -hmm. In the southern region, there's twenty. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's a really great experience for them because you are with um, other students from other uh, countries who maybe have a different level of understanding of film that you yeah. learn from as well. Yeah. Um, you know, for example, Zambia has a huge film industry. Mm. Um, so you learn so much from somebody yeah. who's grown up in that environment where there's more local channels, Absolutely. you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes they, they cross transfer to the other academy. All right, um, in terms, this is amazing. I mean, it's actually quite interesting that others can actually go to other countries because I wanted to, that was gonna be my next yes. question. That can we also go to Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> and tap into that also but that's, that's really good that you can they can also have access to that but let's continue this conversation after the break guys we'll be right back and continue this conversation with Tenby from multi chess but we are talking multi chess it's on a story today see you now All right, so welcome back, guys. We have uh, Tembil Huayla, like I said, she's from Multi-Choice Botswana. She's talking Multi-Choice Botswana story. Such an interesting conversation. Welcome back, <laughs> Tembi. Yes, yes, yes. And then going back to, to the able to, you know, cross um, travel between the academy. So if you do well, um, and you know, uh, one of our former students, her name is Lorato Rapaleng. Mm -hmm. um, we had a speaking engagement uh, the other day with uh, students from Able College. And she was just speaking about how, you know, the most important thing you should do, um, and I hope when this airs, you know, somebody who's watching it is probably hopefully going to the academy. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Um, because the most important thing you should do is make yourself seen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, do as much as you can, work as hard as you can, yeah. because they will pick you up. Um, you know, the fir one of the first ladies that went, her name is Nikita Mokwara. When she graduated, she won um, an internship at Africa Magic. So she went to Nigeria and stayed there for wow. some time. Yeah. Just because she really was doing the most. Yeah, they, they recognized to, the yes, talents, yeah. basically. And her yeah. script writing was phenomenal, yeah. out of this world. And so they identified her out of the whole class and sent her to Nigeria. Um, mm. Lorato also got opportunity. She was recently profiled on CNN Inside Africa Amazing. under the MTF program. So it's really important and it, it just goes to show you that if you really show yourself and you really come out, 
Um, and we know that Botswana are talented. I mean, I, I was saying that whoever gets selected this year, please, we've had such a good run with the Let past one. going. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Please do something that, yeah. you know, gets you on CNN or something else. Yeah. Um, because now we've been identified as, you know, a center of excellence in terms of the creatives that Amazing. come from Botswana, right? Mm. So it just goes to show you that we actually have so much talent. And I don't think we realize how much talent yeah, we, we have. have. Yeah. And it's a good initiative for, for Multi Choice, actually, Botswana, mm. to do that, to yes. actually expose Botswana to this and then, and get out the talent. Because we, we're so talented, you know, like I said, we, we were actually having an interview with Dreamy the other day and mm. we were talking about sporting talent in, in our country. So much talent and we need to be yeah. able to harness and actually pay for that as well. I mean, and, no one know, touches us when it comes to athletics. Yeah. 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 All right. So in the master classes, let's talk about the master classes, yes. how you can access those. And, yes. Um, yeah. So the master classes, right now we've been running them online actually because of COVID, mm. because of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, but ideally, and what we're going to start doing now that things have you know lockdowns and all those things have, have lightened up mm. is to have physical ones so um, the first one we had we had um, someone come in um, from you know the the West Africa side of things so she yeah. had experience in you know the, the breadth of storytelling that goes into telling mm. those uh, those movies that we see so much on Africa magic mm. if you watch Africa magic you know those stories can go on and on and on oh my mother-in-law yeah. that's that stuff <laughs> There's a market. <laughs> my dad loves this stuff. There's definitely a market. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So there's there's there's. Uh, she came in and she told the story of how script writing works. Right. Yeah. So she had that expertise. Um, and so yeah. So as I said, it's free for the attendance. We yeah. select about twenty five to thirty people. That's a good teachable number because yeah. you don't want it to be too big. Um, people who. Um, are interested in learning that specific area. Yeah. So what we usually do is we will find out from the people we already know in the creative industry that yeah. we've worked with before, mm. what are the industry needs in Botswana? Mm. And then we will, you know, go back to our MTF co yeah. um, you know, yeah. colleagues and let them know that okay, right now I think the thing we need in Botswana the most is sound. Yeah, because we have to be relevant, really. right? Yeah. 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 Um, I will say though, I think that one thing that we have really well is stories. I think we don't realize how great our stories are. Mm. Um, if anything, maybe it's just to for, you know clean up how we script right. Yeah. But Botswana has amazing stories. Uh, just, yeah. We just need amazing to present stories. it well. That's what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. This yeah. is actually quite an interesting one. Um, yeah. In terms, I mean. I would like us to talk about now the multi-choice position on local content. Yes. Yeah. What is multi-choice position, a, a position on that? Yes. On so that. when we speak local content, first there's there's two different ideals. So when we speak local content as much as Africa, we're speaking African content, right? Yeah. Um, as the bigger group, we are obviously um, we have a hyper local strategy, mm -hmm. right? Where we uh, purchase commission, license, local content. Mm -hmm. um, I think, believe in 2021, um, 42 or 41% of our general entertainment spend was on local content mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. And if you look at how much international content we have and you compare that to the 42%, you can see it's, yeah. it's a significant stake. Um, and obviously because we, our vision is to be Africa's uh, most loved storyteller and that's what we believe that we are, mm -hmm. um, obviously we prefer to get local content, we prefer to air local content. I mean, um, Mnet has your Mzanzi magic, your Zambezi magic, your, your yeah, Africa magic, yeah. and that's all yeah. local content. Yes. Um, but that's what local content is to multi-choice. Yes, in yes. the context of, of multi-choice Africa, right? Yeah. Um, but when we drill it down to Botswana, to mm. speak on what multi-choice Botswana's um, position is on local content, I'll speak to that. Um, so obviously for us, we would love to have uh, Botswana magic. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it'd be nice. <laughs> yes. Um, and yeah. have more channels that yeah. are owned under DSTV on our on our yeah. platform. But mm. what we have are our local, um, what we call FTAs, which are free to airs, mm. which are now TV, your BTV, mm. and then the audio channels that we have. We've got mm. Gabs FM, Yarna, and Duma FM on yes, our packages, yes. right? Now, you know, a lot of people will say, why don't you have local content on DSTV from Botswana? Mm. But they forget we do. Mm. It, uh, we need to watch our local content. We have now TV. We have BTV, ah. right? And it's very important. It's there on the multi choice yes. options to watch. Yes, uh, I get you. People believe that they want to see it on Mzanzi, but we should wa be watching it on now TV because now TV is ours. Uh, it's Botswana's, right? Yes. So we should, in the same way that you know other African markets support their local channels, yeah. um, we should be able to do that as well. So that's how it's supposed point. to be done. Good. What you're saying is, for example, with the Nigerian one, they are airing it on their channels, which are on DSTV. This yes. is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Yes, but then Basically. obviously they have the Africa Magic. Uh, 
family, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is obviously was born out of the fact that they have such a huge population. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Right? Um, they have a huge population, so uh, they have more viewers to mm. watch their content. Mm. So that's mm. why they can create that all own. four of those Africa. Mm. Yes, mm. you know, that's why Mnet can create a Zambezi magic because it speaks to Zambia, which has a huge yes. uh, population, gotcha. right? Gotcha. Gotcha. To, just to give you context on how you get, you know, a channel onto DSTV that's not a local free to air or, mm. you know, mm. um, the capacity to broadcast is is important. Yeah. The the popularity and how that content will resonate in the rest of the market mm. is important. How much viewership in that country it's of important. that content yeah. is important. Yeah. Yeah. So if there's not enough viewership of that content in Botswana, mm. the likelihood of it being, you know, of it being able to resonate with Zambia, I mean, I think that yeah. answers itself. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? That's yeah. why I, I try to always push people to consume Now TV and mm. BTV because it's important for us to know our content and enjoy our content yeah. and for our content to be popular to us yeah. before we expect it to be popular to people outside Other of people outside right? just got to us, yeah, basically. Exactly. Then we can, uh, like 100%. you're saying, um, Nigeria already has its own. That is yes. able to then, yeah. Yeah, their film industry, their creative industry started way before the African Magic Channel yeah. started, you know? So then yeah. the new guests tapped into yeah. it, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean that we are not looking uh, for local content or that we were not open to having local content. Yeah. We've already had local content on DSTV. We yeah. had, had Date My Family Botswana, mm. um, which was advertiser funded, mm. um, which is a great way to go about getting local content on. Because if there is a local entity that wants to fund a project, yeah. they'll, they'll put it on. Why not? That's what happened with Date My Family. We also had Colors TV, which actually was on, not only on BTV, it was on Moja Love yeah. as well. And it yeah. did quite well on Moja Love. Mm. Um, from social listening alone, we saw that people actually enjoyed um, mm. the series. And we also had a, a documentary uh, for our 50th and, uh, anniversary of independence, yeah. Botswana's We Are All Blue, mm. which um, had Donald Malusi. It was Donald yeah, Malusi's yeah, uh, project. Yeah. 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 So we're really hoping that as the years go by, and that is that is why we're working so hard now with our local um, uh, channels, because we want to see what other work we can do that can maybe transcend and go beyond Now TV and BTV and onto our platform. No, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So how does the prize, how are the prizes determined in the different um, regions? Um, um, yes. Terms, yeah. So each market, um, and each market by each market, I mean each co each country, mm. um, has their own pricing conditions, mm. right? Yeah. Um, each country has their own tax regime, mm. their own uh, currency issues, um, their own inflation, etc. Yeah. Each country economy. has yes, mm. the economy. Yes, your area. <laughs> you would know best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yes, and that determines how we we price our subscriptions, right? Mm. Um, so there's obviously different um, factors that impact that. And then obviously, like we mentioned, just the operating cost of a business, because it is a business, right? Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately at the end of the mm -hmm. day, so that affects the price. The price of content ultimately will trickle down to us. Absolutely. Um, but just to explain what I mean by that, um, which I think is also a misconception sometimes, is that Multi-Choice Botswana, as we are in Botswana, is licensed as a subscription management service. Mm -hmm. So we collect subscriptions, mm -hmm. which enable people to watch DSTV. Mm. We are not a broadcaster. Mm. What does that understand, mean? right? So a broadcaster mean? is BTV is a broadcaster. Mm. Now TV is a broadcaster. Mm. Now TV, there are people at Now TV who commission and license content. Yes. Who go through a content acquisition process. Mm. You know, they they do that. That's what they do. We yeah. don't do that at Multi Choice Botswana. Mm. We don't buy content. We don't license. We don't commission. So now you just come here, huh? just We are here to make sure you can subscribe to DSTV so you can watch all the wonderful things that you like to watch. Yeah. And, yeah. So content, there's content owners, mm -hmm. content rights owners, mm -hmm. and then there's content providers, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So Multiverse Africa is a content provider, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The content owners is your Premier League, mm. right? For example. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, so the Premier League will obviously open up bids for the Premier League. The owners of the Premier League will open up bids for the Premier mm. League in the season, right? Mm. You'll have many pay TV uh, providers bidding for that content. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be multi-choice, it'll be whoever, it'll be mm. whoever, right? Mm, mm. Um, the Premier League will decide on who and how they're going to distribute those rights. So they may say, okay, multi-choice, super sport through multi-choice. Mm. We'll give you the rights, but we'll only give you the rights to air the Premier League in South Africa. Mm. Hypothetically speaking, mm. right? We know that's not the case. Yeah, but it happens. Yes. You're just giving an example. In South yeah. Africa. Mm. And we'll give you all the games, mm. right? Mm. Then they'll say, okay, but we obviously want to get our money's worth, so we're also going to give it to so-and-so. Mm. But so-and-so, you can only have five games, and mm. you can only broadcast in Botswana. 
Mm. Let's just say. Yeah. So do you understand that nowhere in there is multi-choice but Making decisions. That is how sporting rights works. Yeah. And that's why sometimes we will have a channel that maybe will only be available in South Africa mm. and not in the rest of Africa. Yeah. Because maybe that, that content owner only, only wanted their... In SA. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. There's nothing any of us can do about it. <laughs> the content and owner. It yeah, it's, it's really, the onus really is not even on a multi choice Africa or a super sport. Yeah. It's really on the content right owner because they decide where they want their content, their content to, to be air. Viewed. Yeah. yeah. It goes back to other things like repeats. The content right owner will decide how many times they want a program to play because they, when they uh, license the, the yeah. content right mm -hmm. or they commission the content however they do it, yeah. they will determine how much they want to get out of that. Mm -hmm. Most people will not license anything just to play it once. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. You want as many people to see it as possible, yeah, right? Yeah. And not everybody has a PVR. Yeah. Not everybody's home. Yeah, yeah. so you'd want to repeat yeah. it a couple so of times. So we're going to repeat it a thousand times in a day. Wow, wow. this is so interesting. Yeah. I think another thing that we all forget is how um, diverse we are as people, yeah. right? Yeah. So for me, for example, I always say, guys, I love, I can watch Monster-in-Law a thousand times. <laughs> like... Put on, I do have things that I watch over and over again. Yeah, girl, yeah, so it's it's yeah. market, put on J-Lo uh, movies. Um, I love an 80s movie. Yeah. I don't mind it. But then there are people who are like, for goodness sakes, why are we still watching Coming to America? Yeah, you and I don't, I, mean? <laughs> I don't mind it too much. I don't mind That's actually true. Yeah. 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 So, but you know, sometimes you just explain something that we didn't understand as viewers. And thank mm. you so much for, for, for explaining that. We are going to go on a break. And yes. then we can continue <laughs> with our conversation <laughs> with the STV guys. I hope you guys actually now um, get a little bit of an understanding how much choice um, was going to work and how content uh, work you're going to continue with the conversation after break. But now, see you now. Hi guys, welcome back. We are continuing with the conversation with uh, Multi-Choice Botswana. We have Tembi Lofaila here from uh, Multi-Choice Botswana to explain exactly how it works, guys. <laughs> I am so, so informed today because, you know, we, like I'm you're glad. saying, from my point of view, particularly me who loves TV, a bit of TV, not yes. as much as you do, but we'll talk about <laughs> that later. But my husband <laughs> loves TV, loves his football. I mean, he he just, I mean, we subscribe because of that, basically. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, you just made it, you know, made us understand why, you know, things uh, work the yeah. way that they do. Yeah. Now, um, Thames, let's talk about the revolution of decoders. Um, yes. I mean, one, I, I was, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think from the time that we started watching DST when we were kids to now, the, <laughs> the, the evolution of the decoders mm. that you have from recording. I remember there was one who just dual, I think you started with the dual. Yes, the dual PDR. Yes, which was green, it was just nice yes. and fancy, and then it, it evolved to the next, then there was Explorer, then yes. there was Pause and now there was catch up. There's a lot. Yes. Can, let's, um, can, can you just tell us about the, yeah. this evolution and what you guys thinking and what, what, what's, what's going on there? That was really creative. I must give you guys that. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, as it stands with with how you know television is received through yeah. satellites, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, yeah. Right. We've obviously had to evolve, evolve with um, and innovate. Right. Yeah. Um, and we've done that, as you mentioned. I mean, we used to have the huge, massive silver decoders. Remember? Yeah. And now they're like <laughs> this big, and they're gonna just keep getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. And smaller. And so ultimately, they probably won't even be a decoder. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, obviously, it was to make viewing more convenient for the customer. So yeah. um, the two decoders that we have right now are the HD decoder, mm. um, which obviously allows you to view on HD. Mm. And then we have our Explorer 3, which is the latest version of the Explorer. Yeah. And it's really just been enhanced here and there in terms of, you know, lessening the recording um, hours, mm. which is because we've realized that not pe not too many people record as much because mm. we have catch up, right? Mm. So if you have PVR, you don't need that much recording space. Yeah. And as it, you know, with the bigger recording space, it just becomes bigger and, you know, more yeah. clunkier. So yeah. we reduced on that as well. Um, and then we recently um, innovated with what we called Chris, mm. which is the content recommendation system. Yeah. So, you know, and this is another thing that goes back to repeats. I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually victim of this or crime of this as well. Mm. I go to one channel when I turn on the TV, 103, because <laughs> I want to watch The River. I want to watch Unmarried. You know, I that's where I want to go, mm -hmm. right? And then sometimes I'm like, oh, even myself, I'll be like, oh, there's nothing else to watch. But it's because I don't go to any other channels, yeah. and that's what most of us do. If we like sport, we go to sport. 
we rarely digress to see other yeah, channels. Yeah, we, we have no yeah. spots here, I guess. Like, if you have kids, you put the, the channel on for the kids mm -hmm. so you don't even know what's going on on the other channels. Yeah. Um, so what we've done is there's the blue button on your remote that's always been there, mm -hmm. but now it's been enhanced as a feature um, in that when you press it, what mm -hmm. it does, it, it has been witnessing your viewing behavior, what you like to watch mm -hmm. in the house, what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then it will recommend other shows that you would probably enjoy mm -hmm. based on your viewing behavior. So that's the latest development we've had with, with the yeah, Dakota Chris. Yeah, you're evolving. Yeah. Yeah, so it shows yeah. you not only what to watch in terms of shows, but also what's on catch up that yeah. may, you may like. Mm. Um, what box oh, office movies? Just recommend yeah. those will be just the first you. ones. Yes. Yeah, it shows you what movies are on box office. Uh, you know, related to kind of what the movies you enjoy to watch at home. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we're constantly working at ways to improve the viewer's experience. Yeah. Um, obviously, we have the DSTV app, which allows you to um, watch your content across five different devices. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can watch it on smart TV, uh, mm. you know, your cell phone, tablet, as long as you have an internet connection. Yeah, yeah. And then I think the most exciting for everyone is Showmax. Absolutely. Because yeah. everybody loves no, Showmax. So I, I think with the Showmax, obviously, you are now transitioning into the latest way of doing things. Yes. Streaming. Yes. Yeah. To, to yeah. tell us more about yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so obviously, we all know <laughs> that that is where content consumption yeah. is coming, right? Yeah. Um, less and less people actually have TVs. You know, mm. the younger people now don't even care to have a smart That's TV. That's true. <laughs> you know they just I mean? have their laptops yeah. and their iPads. They have yeah. their, their, their things phones, where they have yeah. them. And they want to watch anywhere, you know, anytime, anytime. Yeah. yeah, right? Um, so that's where, obviously, that's where DSTV app came on, right? Yeah. And the fact that you can have your subscription mm. spread across five different um, different devices. Yes. Um, and you can watch live, live TV on, mm. on the DSTV app. Uh, but then it went a little further with Showmax, as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, because binge watching is all the rave right now. Mm. Uh, we want instant gratification. Nobody wants to wait. I like to wait a week for the next episode. I like, like <laughs> you want I like to, the yes. excitement, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm old school. But um, binge watching is what everybody likes. People yeah, don't want to wait. Mm, people they want, can watch like yes, that in one hour. Yes, yeah. I want to sit at home and I watch, watch every episode. I don't know how people do I can't do that. I can't watch a whole series. It, it probably comes from people day. are so busy. Maybe like in yeah. one day, on Sunday, you're just like, okay, my time to yeah. catch up. Yeah. But that's ultimately what um, uh, Showmax is all about, yeah, right? You're responding to how yes. the world is yes, going Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's our response to how the world is moving. And mm. um, just to make life easier for our customers, our DSTV customers, we've added the Showmax add to bill function. Yeah. So if you're a premium subscriber, all you have to do is add DSTV to your bill and mm. you actually don't pay for a Showmax subscription. Mm. It's just an add-on. Okay. And then if you're on the lower packages, if you're on Compact, Compact Plus, you pay a discounted 50% of, of the full amount. So that's about 47 pula. Yeah. Um, so that makes it easier as well. So you don't have to have two subscriptions running. If you have your DSTV Absolutely, subscription, yeah. you just add Showmax to your bill. Yeah. It's easy to do. You just go on the DSTV app. You don't need to call us. You don't need to do any of that. Do you? Yeah. yeah. So that's how we're innovating and moving with the times. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's only going to get better, honestly, because uh, we listen to our customers, obviously, and we yeah. know where our consumers are at. Yeah. Um, that's and the, what they're watching yes, and how they're watching. Yeah. Exactly. So that's that's where we are right now. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, Tams, is there any possibility of us being able to choose our own channels <laughs> in the future, like in any way whatsoever? Because I think probably in this house, there'll be just sports and cartoons and maybe I a know. bit of e-channel for me. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and the food channel. But, but tell yeah. me, is there any possibility? of that in the future. Yeah, so pretty much anywhere you go in the world mm -hmm. where there's a pay TV service provider, you'll notice that pay TV comes in bundles. Yeah. Um, and that is because we're trying to spread the cost of the, the channels, right? Mm, the content. So, yes, clear. yes, exactly. So, um, for example, we have your premium on your premium bouquets. Mm -hmm. Now, if we were to take premium content to bring it down uh, to compact, mm -hmm. it would elevate the price of compact, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. we need to cover the fact that the cover the costs yeah, of you're paying for that content. Yes, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. So let, I just wanted to start there so I can explain the the, the choices. Yes, channels, yes, right. So if you were to choose the channels you want to create your own little bouquet, yeah, it would be far more expensive than landing on one of the bouquets that has the channels spread out, yeah, right? Because yeah. you're not, we're not able to spread the cost if Lorato only wants Mnet. Super Sport 3 mm, and CBBS. Yeah. Mnet on its own is yeah. a very costly channel because yeah. it's international Hollywood movies and we get them fresh from the US. Mm. So it's no longer the, ta the days where uh, the awards would air in November, then we only get them in <laughs> Jan the next year. <laughs> so now you, you know actually I mean? get them on We get them at the same time. Yeah. If it airs at 7 p.m., that's why it airs at 3 a.m. here yeah. because it's live. Live. Right? Live. Um, so and that's ex that's costly on its own. Thank you. Exactly. That yeah. feed is is a cost. Yeah. So that's why it becomes uh, premium content, and that's mm -hmm. why if you were to take that channel on its own without the other channels to dilute, yeah, 
it becomes more expensive yeah, for you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is a really good one because we really need to understand that yeah. this content is not cheap. Let's talk about COVID-19 and how um, it has affected you mm. guys and how you guys are doing business now. Mm. Um, how to tell, tell us about that. Yeah, you know, COVID-19 was a nightmare, obviously, for yeah. everyone yeah. Um, and all businesses. Um, mm. But I think one of the greatest takeaways, if we can say that, mm. um, it forced us to branch out to our networks more mm. um, which enabled us to empower the lives of our people more mm. i think that was something that um, was the, the one plus for us yeah. you know i remember during the times of lockdown um, where we knew people couldn't come to us yeah. we managed to create an installer network at that time with yeah. installers who were um what did we call them again i'm forgetting i think i blocked it out what are people who were mm. on the front lines when you got the permits, what were they called again? Oh, the, the, the frontline workers? Yes. Yeah. But the people that were like the important, the essential, essential yes. services. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what we called them. Yes, the social yes. services. Yes. I, I blocked out in a whole 2020 period. It was a nightmare. It, yes, but it was. we managed to get our installer network as essential services workers, right? So they would be able to take decoders from the office and go to people. Oh, you amazing. see? And what was really heartwarming for me, of course, <laughs> was that um, that meant that they didn't lose out of money. Because yeah. you, you worry working. about those people yeah. during that time. You know, yeah. we worried about our agents. We worried about our installers yeah. and the people we know that their only income was going door to yeah. door, you know. Yeah. But being able to come up with quick solutions on how do we not only help the business keep running, but how do we not let those people suffer, yeah. you, you know. make them essential yeah. service, basically, yeah. So we, we managed that, which was a great innovation, which we realized actually this could actually work out outside of COVID, yeah. you know, for people who don't want to come, you know, and that's how we started the whole installer network. We, yeah. we, so we became creative. Yes, we became creative. Mm. That's that's what it forced us to do, 100%. Um, it also forced us with um, our self-service platforms. We'd already had self-service platforms, of course, um, but we just enhanced our offering. We started a WhatsApp line where yeah. people don't actually have to call, where you can yeah. pay via WhatsApp. You can do everything via oh. WhatsApp. You can get the services that you need via WhatsApp. Um, obviously, we, we we also developed the app during that time, yeah. or we launched the app for Botswana, rather. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we just we really just became creative around the ways that we're gonna make it easier for people to access our product. Yeah. We went into partnership with Pep, and mm. we know Pep is all over Botswana, yep. right? So Everywhere. you can't miss it. <laughs> so, Even in Ramadan, you, man, you, it's there. Girl, you know. <laughs> And now with, with petrol, I calculate every move I have to make. And yeah. I'm sure everybody does the same thing. So yeah. if I know I'm going here, but yo, there's no DSCV branch, mm -hmm. but there's PEP. Yeah, I so I can go there. Yeah. Yeah. It's on a post as well. Yes. Um, we, we, we built our partnership with them during um, COVID. Yeah, during oh, COVID. Amazing. We had launched it in 2019, but we enhanced it through Poso Money yeah. and having more um, points of the different mm -hmm. post offices. Mm -hmm. um, Choppies, we've, we've had an existing relationship with them. So, um, yeah, and Spar, Force, Cash and Carry, we really decided that let's go out there to more yeah. retailers so people don't have to travel as much. Um, we do know that not everybody likes to use the phone. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people still believe, no, I, I want to see my money I going want to someone's hands. Especially here. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have to come and pay. That's true. That's yes. true. Not many of us. I think it's probably the older generation more yes. than anything. Yeah. So we knew that, okay, it's fine. Not everybody wants to use the digital platforms, but let's, let's allow them to have more places and yeah. more options instead yeah. of coming to our branches. We're coming to the end of um, our interview. Thank you so much yes, for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to for coming. We really talked about um, quite a lot of things. Yes. But it, do, do you have any memories yourself of um, this TV content that you used to watch? And what? how do they make you feel? And what are you watching now? I know you mentioned the river and all, you know, yeah. every, every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so DSTV memories. So I, I didn't grow up here. Mm. Um, but the best times of my life were coming back here yeah. on holidays, yeah. right? Um, and the one thing that always stands out when I ever, whenever I think about our memories of, of visiting Botswana and, and Eswatini mm. um, is is watching TV with my cousins. Yeah. Like that was like the center point of, you know, watching Channel O and the music videos. Yeah. That's how I learned. And, you know, the power of television. I'm very passionate about television. Yeah. So just, yeah. <laughs> You're working at the right place. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. The power of television is that it teaches you so much. Yeah. So much of how I learned the Sitsona that I know and the Sitsuati that I know yeah. is through TV uh, and it was through watching TV yeah. on DSTV. Because, and even now with kids, you can see when kids watch a lot of cartoons, you can yeah. see how they talk. Absolutely. To kids. Actually, yes. <laughs> they have huge vocabulary. That's true. <laughs> yes. Actually, cartoons do teach yes. a lot of vocabulary. Um, so th that for me is just, that's that's how I remember TV, the power of it uh, bringing us together yeah. um, and just being that wonderful memory. And then in terms of what I'm watching now, 
Um, I am obsessed with the wife, besides the river. <laughs> obsessed with the wife. Yeah. Even though they're on a projection break. <laughs> and every day I'm on the thing. <laughs> like when, I, when is episode. it coming? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm waiting for season three. I'm obsessed yeah. with the wife. Um, I love living the dream with Somizi. I love mm. reality TV. I love living the dream with Somizi. And of course, the river. Lindy is my gal. Yeah. I love the river. Even though it's confusing me right now, but um, <laughs> it, is, it is probably my favorite it, show. Yeah. And Unmarried as well. Yeah, I, I like Unmarried on yeah. One Magic as well. So yeah. yeah, I'm into the series and I love South African shows, yeah. as you can see. I didn't name one international show, actually. Absolutely. Mm. Come to think of it. Yeah. Because... African. Yeah, yeah, that's all I watch, actually. I don't actually watch any international shows, yeah. which is weird. But yeah. Yeah, well, my memories is obviously Channel O when we were young. That's what yes. we used to watch um, Channel O and a lot of cartoons as well and Cartoon yes. Network yes. and et cetera. You know, I remember my nephews and nieces, that's all they liked. There was a cartoon um, that had a dog called, no, that, that had somebody called Double D in it. Uh-huh. And they called that dog Double D. Oh. I remember. <laughs> And all that's that. So, cute. so that's, that, that, that's the kind of memories that would happen yeah. as, as I grew up. I started watching the Food Channel, the BBC Food mm. Channel. That's one of my favorite yes. um, channels as well. E Channel. I guess I love my E. <laughs> I love my E Entertainment Channel. <laughs> love it. So Aww. I used to watch the Kardashians yeah. all the time. <laughs> but now, yeah, yeah, but I don't have any time yeah, yeah, anymore yeah. now. They have taken over the yeah. TV. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it is. Yeah. <laughs> They've taken mm-hmm. over. But thank you so much. Thank you. For was, coming. To, to, I think this is very important informative thing um and i think uh, we should really do more of these um interviews particularly inform yes. people on how this works i mean this is very mm. refreshing so that uh, we don't uh, make decisions uninformed yes uh, in an uninformed way yeah, yeah 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 thank you so much for having us i think this is actually was a perfect way to kind of launch our 30th year yeah anniversary right yes um to just recap on um, on everything and how far we've come and Thankfully, how far we've come because of what's on our Absolutely. Here, right? Yeah. So, yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview as much as I did, informed as much as I did. We hope to have DSTV be back again. Master Jess was on the back again for us to continue the conversation. But, yeah, for now, bye for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Bye. <laughs>